Yeah, well, I hope there's an end game for all of us, right? <laughs> um, but we have our many committees that meet weekly and they review all the information about where we are as a campus community and make decisions about what is safe and appropriate. So it is in place for now. Boy, do we hope there will be a day when we can all go back to life that doesn't have to be masked, um, but we're certainly not there yet. Yeah, it varies enormously, doesn't it? And we always have to wait first to see whether or not there are going to be state guidelines around various different decision points and then understand, I, I would say there are actually two places, right? So there's what comes out of the governor's office and that takes top priority. The next would be what comes out of the SUNY chancellor's office and then what is left to campus discretion. And so we always work closely with those partners in our decision making. So my message to them is, you know, what a great community you are joining and get involved, right? Find your place. Um, I was so excited to go to a couple of the involvement fairs that happened earlier and so amazed by the amazing range of clubs and orgs and it made me want to be a student again and so many different clubs that I would love to have joined and been a part of and I think that's a really important addition to your educational experience and that is really getting anchored on campus with you know friends and peers who um, and, and those kind of opportunities for growth and involvement outside the classroom as well. I would say the other bit of advice, and I'm a faculty member, so I'm always gonna give this advice, and that is get to know your faculty. Go see them in office hours. Form a bond and a relationship with them that goes beyond just what happens in the classroom. It enriches the intellectual experience and it enriches the sense of engagement and belonging. Absolutely, we, we want to hear what their concerns are and we want to hear what their issues are. And there are so many different avenues uh, for those to float up. Uh, certainly the reporting that you all do in the Statesman is one avenue. Working through different student organizations is another. Communicating directly through either the Dean of Students or the Vice President for Student Affairs if it's appropriate, if it's an area, you know, that, that they're responsible for, or whatever the appropriate sort of area is. Um, we want, we are, we listen to, and we want to hear from our students so that we can address their issues. Yeah, so we are just hearing of and beginning to learn about their concerns, and we very much want to learn more. Um, Provost Paul Goldbart, is happy to sit down with the union leadership with labor relations and really understand their concerns more um, and for us to begin working with them. I am pleased to say that built into this contract is a retroactive pay grade for 2020 plus a pay grade pay increase for 2021 um, and both of those go into effect starting this month. Um, so that will help a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's always complicated um, on budgetary issues. We have already increased a number of uh, salaries ahead of what is required by the union contract. And we'll continue working with them. I mean, I would say my long-term goals, and it's really been my long-term goal since I've been in higher education. This is what I loved about teaching, and it's what I've loved about being in academic leadership positions. You know, the purpose of higher ed is to unlock the potential of our students. Um, and I would say at a research institution like this, it goes beyond that. It's also to unlock the potential of our faculty and staff. We are a mission-driven enterprise, and we are all here in order to allow the talented students who are here to be able to soar, to achieve their dreams and ambitions. Um, and if you want to boil down our mission, it boils down to that. How do we unlock potential? You know, last year was tough, right? We were all remote. Um, we were all living far away from one another. 
Um, we tried very hard to be as communicative as we could be through the channels that we had. Um, but I'm well aware that students don't always read all the emails that are sent to them. And so we, you know, we try to engage in different ways, social media, video, emails. There are probably ways we can do that better. I understand well that what are the forms of communications that my generation is used to engaging with and not necessarily the ones that capture students' attention. Um, so we'll certainly try to do better with that. Um, now that we're back in person, it opens up more and different opportunities for us. I work really hard to meet with students in a both formal and informal settings. Um, I've certainly talked with hundreds of students this year, whether it's through orientation sessions or walking around on Wednesdays during student life hours and just talking with people or whether it's meeting with organized groups like the government student organization or the undergraduate student government or always open. So you all can help us understand what transparency means to undergraduates. We have tons of information up on websites and you know we send a lot of information in emails, but if that's not transparent, help us understand what is. And, and we are certainly desirous um, of being totally transparent with the students. There is not a hiring freeze right now. What we are in the middle of right now is really getting a handle on our budgets and what hiring we're gonna be able to allow to go forward this year. Um, you know, we have to be prudent in terms of our financial position because of course we don't know what's gonna happen in the legislature next year with regard to funding for SUNY and therefore for Stony Brook. Um, but we are not currently under a hiring freeze and we hope that this year we'll be able to do both some faculty hiring and some staff hiring. Yeah, so we've, we've got a lot going on this year. Um, as you know, last year we had our strategic budget initiative and a lot of recommendations came out of that. And so the summer and this fall have been spent implementing a lot of those recommendations. And a lot of those were very much focused on um, uh, you know, unlocking uh, research opportunities for our faculty and how we support them. Some operational things about how we operate more efficiently so that we can be better stewards of the money that we do have. Um, and they were also around things we hope to be working on in the future, which are like, how do we make it easier for our faculty to create innovative new curriculum that our students might be interested in? That's one series of initiatives. Another series of initiatives have been the work we've been doing around the student experience. And so we talked earlier about First Year Welcome Week, and we talked earlier about housing all the first years together and creating sort of living learning communities that work well and really engage our students. And we'll keep working on those kinds of initiatives. Those are a real priority as well. Um, and then as we talked about earlier as well, we will be launching the next strategic planning process um, probably in the spring semester. So, so those are some of the big things that are underway. I think I would just like to leave it with how exciting it is to have a campus that is alive again, um, students interacting and working together and students in classrooms. I'm teaching an honor seminar this class and I love uh, getting a sort of check-in uh, with my students every week and hear how things are going and to get a sense from them as well how important it is to them that they're back on campus this year and I hear from them as well from other students I talk with about how really energizing it is for everybody after a year of isolation to be back together as a community and I hope that we at Stony Brook um, we'll be able to use this as a way to really give us that moment to be grateful for the community that we have, but also ask ourselves, and how can we continue to enhance a feeling of inclusiveness on this campus where everyone uh, really feels connected and valued at this institution.